Tony, what a pleasure, my dear friend. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for sure. taking the time to uh, to join us. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah. A lot has happened since uh, you and I uh, were together last. I mainly want to dwell on Russia, but sure. before we, we get to Russia, uh, the effect of the war on it, the likely and coming demise of Kiev. What is your take uh, two and a half weeks after the attempted assassination? What is your take uh, on the assassination? Was it just this scrawny 20-year-old kid or were others complicit in this? The kid was a, a patsy. The kid has been lied about and, and his history manipulated. The Gab account he supposedly had uh, what was brought up by the acting director of the Secret Service, I think, uh, is it the day before yesterday, and it's been mischaracterized. They basically tried the Secret Service tried to make him into a Trump supporter, and 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 say that he he uh, was uh, some Trump 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 person, and yet it's not. It's very clear he wasn't. If you look at the actual content of the count, so that's first thing. Like, okay, there's something wrong here. Secondly. Uh, just the way he's portrayed as kind of this uh, kid who eh, nobody liked him is like uh, apparently he was uh, a bully, and I, it's just interesting the different narratives which are not quite syncing up. Just him. So then, just set him aside. There's now a video of him moving around, and I'm I'm going to say this, and it's going to be controversial. They wanted him to be seen. The reason they allowed him to kind of move around, Judge, is because they wanted all of all of this evidence, so-called evidence, to be available after the fact. That's why you do that. I was just at the Chesapeake, Virginia event uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, three weeks ago tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> so time flies. And I am I'm a member of Law Enforcement Virginia, and I still had to go through multiple layers. Of, of security to get to where I needed to be to be uh, next to the president on, on, on when he was on stage. And I can tell you for a fact, Judge, nobody was being allowed to wander around uncontrolled. People were channelized. They were searched. They were they were monitored as they were moving. Nobody could just wander around the background. And you had uh, drones and helicopters both flying over constantly. So in this case, apparently this kid with a rangefinder and obvious alerting behavior, which is what I think you're familiar with regarding what law enforcement generally looks at when right. they question someone or see someone on the street, alerting behavior. This kid was alert, alerting behavior all the time. Uh, what, what, what is the bottom line here? That there were elements in law enforcement, state, local, or federal, who wanted him to kill the former yes. president? I, I'm, going to, I'm saying it on a record, absolutely. There's no way, Judge, you allow this kid with alerting behavior to wander around in an uncontrolled area. It's not done. It was done here because there was something that everybody, they all knew about it. And I, another thing I'm going to say, which I think maybe if, if the audience thinks about it, they'll understand what I'm saying. There was a 48 hour kind of dead zone where nobody was really talking about this. Nobody really knew what to say. The reason before that there was after, a before or after the shooting, before, at, before, after the shooting, after the shooting, before they could make any official statements, there was like a 48 hour period that after the shooting, nobody really knew what to say. The reason is because the, the leadership of the Biden administration, the leadership of they didn't know what to say because they had anticipated Trump being dead. They really counted on Trump being dead. So they had already, I think, prepared the narrative. And look what they did in the hearings, Judge. They, the Democrats were already prepared to go after the AR-15. They wanted, they wanted this to be a, 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 a threefer. This was not just a, a twofer. This was a threefer. They wanted Trump dead in a very public way. They wanted his head to explode on stage. I'm sorry I have to be that blunt about it, but that's what they wanted. They wanted uh, an AR to be used because the AR is their boogeyman. They wanted to have the AR be the weapon that killed Trump so then they could go after gun control and, and, and this. And third, and probably most importantly, to send a message that no one should ever dare challenge the political uh, uh, le le leviathan of the deep state and the Democrat Party. It was meant right. to do kind of a, a, a three things. So that's what I thought they... Yeah. But what you're suggesting is a conspiracy so vast 
wouldn't someone have spilled the beans by now and say, here's what I overheard my boss is talking about and I, and I have to come forward with it? So you have to understand how these things are done. Uh, these things are done where people are quietly recruited. They're permitted to have political beliefs, which uh, which are uh, in complete sync with the Democrat Party and the ruling class. And they just they just uh, are kind of suggested on what they should do and not do. You, and, th and that's why I'm, I can't say which agency I suspect was completely involved, but it wasn't a federal agency who was completely involved in, in helping facilitate this. You're not you're not going to find this through federal FOIAs. That's what my point is. Right. Judge, these people have done this before. This is not the first time. My, my friend and your friend, you probably, you know Matt Ho, right? Yes. Matt, Matt and I have talked about this. Matt uh, correctly identified in, in, in our previous discussions that this is not the this is not the first time that we've we've seen this rodeo play out. Uh, there have been events uh, such as the, as the uh, RFK assassination, the JFK assassination, uh, MLK. K. This th these things were conspiracies. They did happen, and they were all portrayed as as lone wolves or lone gun gunmen. So you know, they the the, the folks who did this have done a, an excellent job of looking at the past and figuring out how to apply those successful formats to the present. And yeah, I think we're going to come to find there was a very large conspiracy that a lot of folks were involved in. And I, it doesn't, is, is so. the, forgive the language, but yeah. you will know what I mean and the audience will know, is the public pissing contest between local Pennsylvania police and Secret Service a charade? It is. So, uh, you, you're kind of going where I don't want to talk. <laughs> I think there's okay. some folks there. All right, well, you that, go as far as you can I, without I think uh, saying something you shouldn't say. Everything that that happened and everything that is clandestine was is in plain sight. I know this is hard to, to explain. The, the, the best things I did as an operative were always hidden in plain sight. It looked incidental to everything else going on. And we, we pulled off some amazing, <laughs> that's the irony of being a clandestine guy. You, you can't talk about your best operations, but I'll say this. We, we have seen the real shooters in the media. They have been hidden in plain sight. There's a reason, Judge, that right after the attempt People were up on that rooftop contaminating the crime scene. Think about this. You're a judge. You've seen all sorts of law enforcement shenanigans. Who, con who contaminates a crime scene of this magnitude? Well, the people who contaminated the crime scene had a reason to contaminate the crime scene. And that's why you see all these deviations. You see things which would never happen in other circumstances, but it's all done in front of the camera. It's all done concealing the, the actual clandestine events within the, the terms of, of what is normally seen. It's all think, hidden in plain sight. Do you think since this failed that they will try again? No doubt. And I, I uh, several of us who are familiar with security have made strong recommendations to the president's team on what they should do to protect President Trump because we all believe, and this is my, my colleague, Blaine Holt, General Holt, um, folks who I've served with my entire career, we are all very concerned and believe that there are adequate and uh, uh, qualified people who would have uh, a, a complete commitment to, to protecting him. Right. And unfortunately, the, 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 the Secret Service does not have that commitment, which is obvious at this point. Okay. Um, I want you to watch this clip from uh, Ronald Rowe, who's the acting uh, director. It's uh, pretty sure. uh, bellicose. Uh, it's about a minute and a half long, but I want you to comment on it, and then we'll get on to the Russia uh, sure. stuff. Uh, cut number six, Chris. This is from the second floor of the AGR building. This point of view is the point of view where the counter-sniper team locally was posted. The gold arrow indicates where the shooter fired from. Looking left... Why was the assailant not seen? When we were told that building was going to be covered, this view is a reenactment by one of my agents laying flat. There was a five inch rise on the middle of that roof. The assailant would have had to present his bore over that to get his shot off. 
The view underneath reflects the perspective that he would have had. Again, I call your attention back to the first exhibit, if they'd have looked left. This is what our counter sniper team saw. These were discussions that were had between the Pittsburgh field office, the local counterparts, and everyone supporting that visit that day. And that's why when I laid in that position, I could not, and I will not, and I cannot understand why there was not better coverage, or at least somebody looking at that roof line when that's where they were posted. Credible or not? He's lying. They, they, everything he said was known before the shot was taken. And I'm, I don't want to be, I, I need to be careful here. The very, the very elements he's outlining were known by the people who shot at Trump. That is to say that, that he's presenting essentially their operations plan for concealing this. Think about it. He's, he's laying out how, oh, yeah, we couldn't see him, this, that, and the other, but we still, you know, he's telling you how they did it, Judge. He's, he's taking and, and switching around the, the, what they had done because he's because they knew this they knew this would come up and so they had to, to they've had to conceal everything within the context of how they would commit themselves to protecting the president that's what i'm telling you it's all hidden in plain sight you just started you just have to start peeling off the layers to figure out that what they're saying is essentially what they they intended to do this was not accidental this was not random this was not incompetence uh, and I, I he's lying the the projectile that hit Trump's ear was it fired by Crooks or by somebody no. else? So I, I refer back to the ballistic uh, record, the, the 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 audio ballistic record. Bang, bang, bang. Those were three very precise shots. One hit Trump. The first one hit Trump. The other ones came very close and hit other folks. Judge. I've had to sh take hard shots with a rifle and even in best circumstance when you're confident and, and, and by the way, there's ample video showing people were yelling at this kid, people, this kid was under pressure. So, and so he's supposed to have just taken a deep breath and fired off three precise rounds, one of which could have been the kill shot. And then there's a video where they're supposed to, it's supposed to capture him at the very moment the first shot is shot. And it looks like he, he didn't shoot because there's a certain, even if you shoot with it, I've got an AR, but I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't want to bring it up because I've had to redo this for several interviews. Yeah, I understood. There, there's still, there's still a, a bit of a recoil and you can see it I'm, and, I'm and you can see the, the side of his face. Right. So I'm just saying that nothing, nothing is matched. So I think the first three shots were taken by a professional. I think the wind had an effect to, uh, to move that bullet, bullet just a little bit to the president's right, which helped, you know, move it off of his ear, moved it to his right, about a, a five to seven mile an hour breeze, which apparently the shoot, and then after the first three rounds, which were very, very, you know, accurately tight. aimed, very tight, then you had the bang, 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 bang. And I think, I think those were fired by crooks potentially, because I think he figured out something's wrong. And those were just kind of just fired off. Does so, the government does the government know who fired the shot that hit Trump's ear? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they know. Wow. They know. Well, you're talking about uh, attempted murder, and you're talking about conspiracy uh, to commit yeah. murder. I mean, these are uh, among the most serious crimes in the American lexicon. All right. Uh, fascinating conversation, uh, Tony. But I have so many other things to uh, get to uh, with you. The war in Ukraine. Is this transforming Russia in a way to make it more economically prosperous and unified behind President Putin? So the only economic prosperity that's being seen right now, besides Zelensky getting rich, uh, are the Russians. Uh, let me pull up my stats because I've been answering questions about this over the last few days. So. Russia has been moved by the World Bank judge into a high income bracket. That is to say that uh, their economic growth 
I can't believe I can't find my notes now, but they're around here somewhere. They, the, the Russians have been moved into a high income growth category. Basically, they've got like 11 uh, percent uh, growth uh, overall in, in some sectors, not all sectors, but a lot. And they've pretty much overcome the, the sanctions. Now, here it is. Uh, eleven point two. They're 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 uh, they're people. That they're basically eleven point two percent, according to the World Bank growth. That's success. Putin has overcome all sanctions. They, they I, I they planned for them. They were never going to work, and they failed. And the only people who have actually suffered from sanctions is, <laughs> is Germany and uh, the Europeans. So at this point. There's no incentive for the Russians to change the trajectory of their uh, activities. And plus, they just did this large prisoner swap. If I were Zelensky right now, I'd be worrying about the terms of that deal because I think the reason this swap happened is because I think the West is starting to recognize there's no there there with Ukraine. And so I think there's real negotiations now ongoing. I think you're going to see uh, a... Uh, Re, re uh, evaluation of the Istanbul agreement. I think a lot of folks who are practical are looking at an Istanbul plus things. What do you think will happen? I'm switching gears now. Uh, if Israel gets into a major fight with uh, Hezbollah and Iran backs Hezbollah and Iran comes under a major assault from Israel, will Russia sit still? No. I think the Russians have already voted with uh, with the uh, with Tehran. I think they are with Tehran. With that said, uh, the Russians are fairly limited on what they can do directly. I think it's much more likely that you would see Turkey do something. Turkey's actually threatened to do something against the Israelis. Erdogan, who is a member of NATO, I might add, has made uh, bellicose comments and rather uh, aggressive uh, uses of the English language to say that he he feels that that he must do something. Isn't he just uh, a blowhard? He's been saying this for a year. Blowhards tend to get themselves in trouble, and I think this is a situation where he may get himself in trouble because he said he wants to do something. He may well try it. I don't know. Remember, he did. He Erdogan did leave the back door open for ISIS to become a uh, a regional threat that required. Uh, immense military action. So Erdogan is playing a game that only Erdogan thinks he can benefit from. So okay. at this point, I don't know. But uh, but Russia would, I think, try to help Tehran if, if it comes push comes to shove. Now I'm going to ask you a question that I know you want me to ask you, <laughs> even though we have not talked about it ahead of time. Did Joe Biden jump or was he pushed? <laughs> he was pushed. <laughs> <laughs> so you come on, you know, you've met Joe Biden. I've met Joe Biden. Joe yeah. Biden is uh, he would never have left the White House or left being a candidate without someone threatening him. He had to be heavily threatened. I think that uh, I've seen credible reporting from Cy Hirsch. I think Cy is correct that, uh, that, that basically Obama went to him and said either you take the gracious way out and drop out or else we're going to 25th amendment you. I think he was threatened with a coup. And uh, I'm not saying they shouldn't have done the coup. I think the 25th amendment is adequate and, and, and justified, but you have to understand they, the, the left, the folks in the current left never play. I, I know people who are traditional liberals judge who I love and get along. Matt, Matt Ho is a traditional, I consider a traditional liberal. Uh, these other folks are progressives who are essentially just one step away from 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 Stalin. And this was a Stalin a, a Stalin like move where the party wouldn't just do the right thing and use the Twenty Fifth Amendment to remove him. No, that would have damaged the brand. What they've what they've they've done, I think, is worse. They've actually taken someone, pushed him out, who actually got fourteen million votes as their candidate for president. And now it's like, oh, yeah, never mind. I'm just going to get out and I'm going to let Kamala do it. Kamala, who did not, Kamala Harris, who did not receive one vote of support in the primary. And she, in, in 2020, didn't even make it to the final high. You know, she was not even a, a, on, the, on the stage of any substance regarding the percentage of support she had then. So right, I think right. this is a, a coup d'etat that we're watching in real time.